Welcome back, church. Welcome back, church. And uh, we just want to say today is Palm Sunday. So we just, we're getting ready for for um, Good Friday, Easter coming up. So we're just excited and we just want to celebrate and we just want to honor you this morning, God. And we're finish up, a, we're wrapping up a three-part series today, Baptism with the Holy Spirit, three of three series, the Holy Spirit promised. Amen and amen to that. But we're in a battle of warfare, so we are going to put on the whole armor of God. We're going to read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 this morning, and we're going to put this on me and my family, you and your family, and we're going to put this on the people that... um that come to watch the video and for the people that you are praying for for the revival that we are going to be having April the 7th on salvation, April the 8th on healing, April the 9th on deliverance, and April the 10th on baptism with the Holy Spirit. And that starts this coming Friday, April the 7th, four-night revival. We will be doing... a. Uh, Posting the videos, making the videos, and posting them each day from the 7th through the 10th. So we're excited, we're we're thrilled, and we're honoring God, and we're bringing uh, needs, our needs of the, His children to Him. And He's going to come forth, and, and I believe He's going to show up, and He's going to uh, to fulfill our needs, and He's going to bring salvation to those who need salvation. He's going to bring healing to those who need healing. He's going to bring deliverance to those who need deliverance. And he's going to bring baptism of the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit. And that is for each and every Christian to walk in the will and the purpose and the plan that the Lord has for you. So that's what we're jumping into this morning. The whole armor of God, Ephesians 6 10 through 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to, st to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may, may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Amen to that. Therefore, having gritted your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench the fiery darks of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful till this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, and for me that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly, make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. So I pray that we, we bring this to you in prayer. I pray that you cover us with the blood of Jesus. I pray that you cover us with the armor of God, Lord. I pray that you open our eyes, our ears, and our heart to your word this morning. And I pray that you will... Uh, Allow us to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ baptizes you with the Holy Spirit in fire. Amen and amen to that. So right here, Acts 1, 4 through 8. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. So this is the Lord speaking here. Which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times, the seasons for which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Man, he's telling you, that's a command. 
This is known as the great commandment. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that. He has given you the power and authority to do so. If he asks you and tells you that you're going to go and preach the word to the to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. He's talking to you. He's talking to me. And we are going to minister. We're going to testify what he's done. You don't need to be a preacher, a minister. The ministry comes of what he done. We speak of what he has done and what he has done in our life. And that is a ministry that we, it's a testimony and that is the word of God and that is the power of God and that is the fruit of God on your life. Amen and amen to that. So Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Spirit, fire and power. But we get our authority through relationship, intimate relationship with the Father, spending quality time with him and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Uh, Satan and his minions have power that was given to them by the Father. So they once had authority and power because they were in heaven with the Lord. But when the Lord, when they disobeyed the Lord and he threw Satan and one third of his demons out, and what was it that they disobeyed? It was, uh, remember, it was pride of life. He wanted to be higher and be God himself, right? So God threw them and one third of the angels out, but he gives you power he strips the authority because they are no longer he they no longer have the authority from God, but they still remain with the power. So Satan has the power that was given to him by Jesus Christ. People of this world, that's why we have psychics, mediums, they turn the power of God that God has given us to do for good. For his kingdom, they turn it for the kingdom of darkness and use it for the kingdom of darkness. That's why if you go to a, a brujaria, you go to a witch doctor, you go to a palm reader, card reader, necromancer. What is a necromancer? A necromancer is one that goes and, and, and like a palm, kind of like a palm reader or somebody, they go and they seek the dead for the answers that you are answering them. That's why you are... A curse is put upon you when you go to palm readers and and any kind of fortune teller. You call the psychics on the phone. You get on the computer. You uh, they probably have apps. I don't know, but whatever you do, you get a curse from Satan. And then the Father, our Father in heaven, the Lord Jesus, uh, the Father God in heaven, Elohim, and His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The Father puts a curse on you because you turn to Satan. We're just going to call it Satan because they have so many titles. Like I said, palm readers, card readers, tarot cards, uh, 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 astrolite. Uh, even when you guys read your horoscope on the side, like I love to read uh, Yahoo. I'll look at the news and right in the corner, it has the thing. For years I read that. Years. And then when I found out it was bad... Uh, and I got saved, I stopped reading it. I still read Yahoo News today, but I do not read that little corner. I've learned how to just not, I see it, but I learned how to block it out. And that's what we have to do. We have to block out the enemy because the enemy is the thief. And the thief comes what? To kill. And what does he come to kill? You and to destroy you and your family. Man, we have to stand straight. So we have authority and fire, power, love, physically living inside of you and me. The Holy Spirit. And he is a person. He is a third member of the Trinity. And he is willing to do the works of the Father. But the question is, are you willing to do the works of the Father? Are you willing to walk by faith? Faith without works is dead. So if you're not doing the will of the Father, walking by faith. There is no faith being administered. There is no faith that he can come and do the will that he has planned for you. He needs you to show up with faith and believe and trust in him. And just because you show up with faith doesn't mean that he's going to answer it. He does things according to his will. But when you are lining up your faith, you're lining up your will with him great things can happen because now you are doing what he asked you to do. Now it is on him to do the will. So 
you line up your will with him, your purpose, your plan, and you don't question him. You do it. His timing is everything. He knows everything, the timing and everything. You may do what you need to do and you think that it didn't get done because you didn't see it done. But where is the faith in that? Because you're wanting to see it, but your timing is not his timing. Allow him to just, just trust him and allow his timing to be administered when he administers the timing. Amen and amen to that. You cannot please the Father without faith. You are seeking baptism with the Holy Spirit who already exists in you as a believer. So already as a believer, you have the Holy Spirit because on the day of salvation, Jesus Christ, I mean, the Holy Spirit, it's a, a spiritual baptism. I call it the first baptism. The Holy, the day of salvation, the Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. That's why you are called hence the body of Christ. He's the head and we are the body. I really like to say he's the head and we are the tail. Amen to that, Lord. So you are seeking baptism with the Holy Spirit and he lives in you. The power and the fire comes upon you when Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we are seeking that you baptize your children. Baptize all the believers who come to you and ask for you to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, Lord. I believe that all believers need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire in order to do the will of the of the Lord, just to stand up righteous in, in, in the word. Amen, Lord. Power and fire comes upon you when Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. Now you can walk like a soldier in God's army, ready for spiritual warfare with his power and his authority because we fight in an unseen realm and it is demonic and you don't see it and you don't even believe it because you can't see it and that is why we go through the hell that we go through because we are ignorant to satan most of us don't even believe in satan so therefore he has you fooled tremendously because that is exactly what he wants if you do not believe in him then how can you even address it then you won't believe in the and what the word that we tell you that the holy spirit will come and battle for you the holy spirit will fight the enemies the holy spirit will give you the power and the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions which is the demons the evil spirits the unclean spirits and he commanded you the very opening chapter he commanded you to go to judea samaria jerusalem until the ends of the world ministering the word of god and it's no more time we are soldiers in the army but we need to become warriors i'm just going to stop right here the LBGT community is against us. This past, what, two or three days ago, today, two or three days ago, there was a, a transgender person, man, who went into a school um, a, in Tennessee, went into a Christian school and killed three children and three adults because he was angry because... And the president of the United States, Mr. Joe Biden himself, the John Pierre who speaks for him said that the LBGT community is tired and they are standing up and they are not taking any more. So basically what he was saying that he justified the murder of the six people, three being children and three being adults because they were Christians and the LBGT community is tired of Christians saying that, um, what do we say? What are they tired of? We say that there is two genders, male and female. We are created in the image of God and everything else is a lie. So because we say that and believe that and we tell you guys the truth, they hate it and they hate us and the president of the united states is not on the christian side he has chosen to choose the lbgt community she her words were exactly he stands behind the lgbt community and he will continue to support them even with the violence that they are doing they didn't even apologize to the family and say we regret the family they sat there and took up for the LGBT community. So we are at war with these people. And these people are taking over. And you allow it, dude. And ladies. Oh, because my son, my daughter. You allow this. Instead of telling your son and your daughter that it is a lie. 
and praying for them. You support them. Oh, I want them to be what they can be. We cause this. They started and we back them up and we're Christians. What about Jesus? What about the Holy Spirit? What about the Father? Do we not stand behind Him? We stand for them, the people? Man, you as Christians, we're wrong, bro. You and me are wrong. The Lord says that man and, and woman are male and female, and that's it, bro. There's no more in between. Y'all can be what you want to be, but now you're attacking the Christians. Now you're even killing Christians because of the hate that you have. And if the world can't see that, you are blind. Amen, Father. I'm sorry, Father. You cannot please the Father without faith. You are seeking baptism with the Holy Spirit who already exists in you as a believer. The power and the fire comes upon you when Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. Now you can walk like a soldier in God's army, ready for spiritual warfare with his power and his fire. Come on, let's go. We are now ready to serve in the army and walk forward and stand with our feet and planted and rooted in his word, even if it disagrees with what the... The people are telling us what the culture is telling you. The culture is making up what they want because they are allowed. We are allowed to do anything these days. Anything you can think of, you can do. And all, and, and they will back you up. Oh, yeah, they will back you up 100% because that is what they do. They come to steal, kill, and destroy and the, Satan is their father, and they do the work of the father. That's why we have all these, uh, as we were talking in the last one, that's why we have all these antichrist people who are, are telling you that Jesus is not the Son of God, and he is not God on earth. He is a prophet. Acts 2, 38-39. Then Peter said to them, Repent. And let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children. Lord, I pray that this morning. I pray that not only do my children get saved and, and, and the people that you're ministering become saved, Lord, but that you will promise to put the Holy Spirit upon them that they can walk as a Christian, Lord, upright, doing the righteousness of God. Amen. And to who all are far off, yes, Lord, the ones that we are praying that you would draw them near to your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for salvation, Lord, and deliverance and healing, Lord, and baptism with the Holy Spirit. I, I'm asking for it all, Lord. So, Lord... As many as the Lord our God will call. So see, it says that you'll call them, Lord. So I'm, I'm asking you, Lord. I'm asking you with all my heart that you draw the children. There's people that we have loved ones that are lost. And Lord, I mean, my Lionel, my destiny, my Anthony, Lord, if I'm in heaven, Lord, with you. And my children are in heaven because I didn't teach them right. I didn't pray for them. But they have the choice, Lord. They have the choice. All I can do is lead them and guide them and, and come to you, Father, because you know where my heart is, Lord, and, and I do that, Lord, and I continue to do the will and I continue to pray for my family and children that you may draw them near, and I stand with my brothers and sisters who are just like me, who have children that are lost in the world, and we want them to be drawn near to the Father. We want salvation and deliverance and healing and baptism of the Holy Spirit to come upon them. So that is what we're praying for. That is what we're believing for. That is what we're hoping for. That is what we are asking for. And I know you, Father. You want them more than we are even asking you. So let my will and purpose and plan and this revival align with your purpose and plan and your will that you have for them, Lord, that you may come and fulfill them with the needs that they have in every area. I know that is asking a lot, Lord. I know that, but Lord, I know that you can do these things and people have great needs. So it is a lot to ask, but I am asking and I'm standing with you and I'm believing with you, Lord. And I know that April the 7th through the 10th, I'm not even going to believe. I'm not even going to understand, Lord. And I don't want to, Lord. I just want to trust in you and believe in you and, and, and pray and 
I know you. I trust you. I believe in you. Amen, Lord. So Acts 2, 38 and 39. This is beautiful right here. A clear example of the three baptisms. One, repent, repent clearly salvation. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of Christ. Remember right here, Peter goes, repent. So the first thing he's saying, hey man, repent for your sins. You're a sinner, repent. So there's the first baptism right there is repenting and receiving salvation of the Lord. The second baptism is water baptism. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. What did Peter say? Repent and come and be baptized, every one of you. So the first thing he does right there is they give their heart to God and then they get water baptized, right? And this is all coming from Acts uh, 2, 38 and 39. We just read it. And then it says the third baptism, three baptism, baptism with the Holy Spirit, what we are seeking you today for, Father. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Look what he says right here. For, uh, for you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then he goes on to say, for the promise is to you. So you receive the Holy Spirit. And to your children, your family, your wife, your husband, your children, and to who all are far off, that child. Uh, I'll give you a clear example. My, I have three children, Lionel, Destiny, and Anthony. My oldest son was baptized and believed in Jesus Christ, but today he's an atheist. He doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. What do you think that makes me feel? How do you think that makes me feel that the the very thing that I dedicate my life to, my son doesn't believe in. He he thinks that he's so smart and he doesn't believe. But let me tell you what, Jesus will come to him and he will bend his knee and he will show him who he is. And on that day, it'll be a glorious day because he will know who Father is. And I pray that he will be saved, he will be healed, he will be delivered, and he'll be baptism in the Holy Spirit. My Lionel, my Lionel knows God, believes in God, but does he serve God? Does he, you know, is he going to church? Is he serving God? No, he's going out and he's doing things he probably has no business doing. And we pray and we believe and we cover them with the blood and we try to minister to them. But I can't force my son and my daughter. You know, she's a grown woman. Uh, I wish she was going to church. You know, she would go to church with us and everything. But now she's married. Now she's living her own life, you know. And I minister to her and we talk to them. But we can't force them. And they know God and we show them. So all I can do is seek to God and pray for God just like I'm doing with y'all. I'm probably in worse shape than you guys are. So, you know. We believe and we trust, and that's what all, this is all about. This is drawing our children, our friends, our family, our workers, ourselves, draw near to the Lord and ask Him to come in and save and heal and deliver and baptism with the Holy Why do you keep saying baptism with the Holy Spirit? If y'all knew how important this was, you cannot do the will of the Father without baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why do you think Jesus says not many days from now, y'all wait here and, and uh, go to, uh, where does He tell him? Go to Jerusalem, Judea, and y'all wait and the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And then that was after he went up 10 days later on day 50th, which is Pente Pentecost. That's when the Holy Spirit came and gave them power and authority. But right here is beautiful. Don't miss this. You see three baptisms right here. Repentance until salvation, being baptized with water, and then baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire and power. Amen. So these three baptisms clearly explain salvation, water baptism, and the gift of the Holy Spirit, baptism with the Holy Spirit. Given to you as a believer, a gift that you as a believer must seek Him for baptism with the Holy Spirit. So you pray and you ask God. I will pray this with you and ask Him to deliver it to you. But we're standing together, but you have to desire this. You have to want this. And you have to know that this is so that you can walk in the will, the purpose, and the plan. And faith without works is dead. So what good is it to be baptized with the Holy Spirit if you're not going to allow Him, if you're not going to surrender to Him so that He can do the will of the Father? That is the best way to put it right there. Surrender to the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Ask for baptism with the Holy Spirit this morning so that you can do the will of the Father with fire and power and love. This promise is for you and your family as well as those who are far off the lost. That is who we are praying for by faith. Lord, we ask that you baptize us with the Holy Spirit in fire 
and his authority in order to do the will of our Father, the, Mo the Holy One, the Most High. Amen. All who he calls according to his will. So all that he calls according to his will. We thank you for that word this morning, Lord. Baptism with the Holy Spirit is a beautiful thing because the Holy Spirit exists in us already because we are children. But when you, it's like you activate the Holy Spirit. You know, you activate it. And now He can do the will of the Father. He can show you things to come. You can pray. Y'all can pray together, spend time together. Uh, create a beautiful intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit let me tell y'all something the Holy Spirit is a spirit but he is a he he is a person the Holy Spirit so he has feelings he has he is a person Acts 18 14 through 17 now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God they sent Peter and John to them whom they had when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. So they received the Word of God, and they knew that they needed to receive baptism with the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them, so he hadn't fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, so they were saved, water baptized. The next step is baptism with the Holy Spirit. Do you see the order? Do you see the order? They were saved. Then they had been water baptized. Now they were uh, they had, they were requesting the Holy Spirit, right? But it hadn't fell on them at this time yet. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. What did they do? They laid hands on them and they received the, the Holy Spirit. This is so cool. Peter and John went to Samaria on a mission to pray for them, the Gentiles, to receive baptism with the Holy Spirit. They had been saved and only water baptized in the name of Jesus at this point. Then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They came and prayed and administered faith in laying hands on them. They asked the Lord and believed, and they received all done by faith. So what did they do? They heard that the word, I believe it was, uh, what's his name that was preaching the word, the evangelist, was preaching the word in Samaria. They heard that the word has been there. So Philip, Philip was preaching the word in Samaria. So they went with to join Philip and look what they did. They prayed for the people to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit to the Father. They were already praying this, talking about this. They had a game plan. They went down there and they laid hands on them. So Father... I, I love this. This is exactly what we are trying to do. So, Father, I pray that you lay hands on your children this morning, Father, by faith, that we lay hands on them through faith, Lord. Father, we pray to you this morning that you will lay hands on them, Father, and that you will administer the baptism with the Holy Spirit, just like Peter and John prayed for your children in Samaria. We are praying for your children around the world, Lord. Not just Samaria, Samaria and everywhere. Anywhere you will send this video and they will hear it. We pray that you would minister the Holy Spirit to them because, Father, we can't do your will. We can't even walk as Christians without the fire and the power and the authority that you've given us through the Holy Spirit and baptism with the Holy Spirit. That is what we're requesting this morning. So Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. So right here in Acts 2, uh, 2, 38 through 42. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. See, it's a gift, free gift, just like salvation, a gift that you cannot buy or earn. For the promises to you and to your children and to who all are afar off, as many as the Lord God will call. A virtual church grows. So verse 40, And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. That is today's truth. Then those who gladly received the word were baptized, baptized with water. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them, to the kingdom of God. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
And they continue steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of the bread and in pray, pray and in breaking of the bread and in prayer. Please note here, this was right after Peter and the hundred and twenty who were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost when Jesus baptizes uh, them with the Holy Spirit, fire, and power. The word saved about 3,000 souls that day, piercing their hearts, and baptizing them in the name of Jesus for the kingdom. The Holy Spirit did the work piercing their hearts. Peter was the vessel God chose to use. In obedience, Peter was blessed on this particular day because he was obedient to the Lord. So when you're obedient to the Lord, you can see the Lord work, and all the glory goes to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our God. But we are blessed to be a blessing for His kingdom, all for His kingdom, because we He, he, he uses us. He used Peter. Can you imagine ministering to a great crowd like that? And 3,000 men and women and children give their heart to God and are baptized in the same day? and become believers, and are filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen, Father. You can do all things, Father. Remember, my kingdom, come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen and amen to that. My kingdom, come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen, Lord. Allow the Lord to use you. Well, how do I do that? Ask. Ask. Seek him in prayer, petition him for the will and he that he has for you. The plan, the purpose, the destiny he has for you. Come earnestly. Seek him. Humble yourself before the Lord. And you may have to seek him quite a few times. You know, you have to come to the Lord. He knows your heart. And he may test you, but don't give up. And he will show you the will he has for you. Maybe not all at once, but he will direct your path just as his word tells us that he will show you and lead you and guide you into all truth. Just what the Bible says. So come and let's stand together and pray to the Lord for baptism with the Holy Spirit, fire and power in order to do the will of the Father. So please, let's stand and pray that we may receive baptism with the Holy Spirit. That's what we've been doing. We have been ministering on the revival, man. April the 7th, salvation. April the 8th, healing. April the 9th, deliverance. April the 10th, baptism with the Holy Spirit. We have been planning and rooting, digging trenches, uh, planning and rooting all for months, three months, in order to receive for the, bapt for the revival that we are having on April the 7th and 10th. We have been... We have been putting in some work. We have been praying. We have been seeking. We have been uh, asking the word to go forth. We have uh, not only praying and bapt uh, praying and, and uh, fasting and and seeking the Lord on this matter and 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 sending His word forth and believing by faith that He's going to heal me and my family, heal you and your family, save me and my family, save you and your family, bring deliverance to you and your family, and and baptism of the Holy Spirit to you and your family. Amen and amen to that. That's what we're believing for. That's what we're asking for. And that's what we're standing on this morning, Lord. We have been putting in the work. We have been seeking you. And we have been doing what you have showed us to do and have taught us to do. And what we see the word is, is in the word for us to do. And we are bringing that to you. We are laying that at your feet. We are believing by faith that you will heal these people, save these people, deliver these people, and bring baptism with the Holy Spirit to your children. Because we cannot do the will, your will, Father, without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So stand with me and let's pray and let's seek the Father. So Father, we ask you, Lord, to allow those who want to be who choose to be filled with the baptism with the Holy Spirit because you know their hearts, Father. You know, you know their heart, Father. I believe in and I trust you, your will, Father, that you have for me and that you have for them. Let it be done according to your will. Let us stand in one accord petitioning for the baptism with the Holy Spirit, Lord, in order to do your will. And we thank you, Jesus, for this blessing. Now let me be a blessing to others, administering your will that you have for me 
that I can be a vessel for you and your kingdom for your children. Amen and amen to that, Lord. That That is what we are here for. That's what we're seeking this morning. Baptism with the Holy Spirit in order to do the will of the Father. That is what we are seeking. And your word says that when we lay hands on them, they received it, Lord. So we're asking this morning that you lay your hands on me and your children. Your children and me, that you lay hands on all who are coming to you for the Holy Spirit because you know our heart. If our heart aligns with your word and we are requesting baptism with the Holy Spirit, fire and power, Lord, it is your will. And and being that it is your will, I believe that you will be a blessing to us so that we could be a blessing to your children. So, Father, lay your hands on your children this morning that they may receive baptism with the Holy Spirit just as the day of Pentecost in the upper room they were all in one accord and we are all in one accord with you and one accord meaning I stand with you father I stand with them your children who are seeking you father I am one with them and I stand with you Lord and you are in me Lord so I am standing with them coming to you Lord to stand with you by faith for them by this faith, we ask together for baptism with the Holy Spirit. That was a lot right there, Lord. Baptize them with the Holy Spirit. May you allow me to administer the prayer that he or she may believe and receive baptism with the Holy Spirit. So allow me to pray with them. I stand with them and we come to you, but I stand with you and we come to them, Lord. So I'm like the middleman, Lord, just... I bring it to you and you you deliver it to them, Lord. Amen and amen to that. So I'm the DH, Lord. In the name of Jesus, my Savior, Lord and Father, Dad, please heal them. Please send the Holy Spirit in your great name, Father. So we thank you this morning for, for sending your word forth and we are petitioning you, Father, with all our heart, Lord. And you know, Lord, there are people who have wrong intentions, Lord, and want power and authority for the wrong intentions, just like Satan, Lord, who fell and you cast out, Lord. So, Lord, if our heart is pure, because you know my heart, you know our hearts, if we are willing to do the will of the Father and walk as a Christian, believing even to walk as a Christian, we need the power and authority uh, from the baptism with the Holy Spirit, Lord. So we pray that you will baptize your children this morning. Send your word forth. May they receive baptism with the Holy Spirit this morning. In the name of Jesus, receive it by faith and ask the Father, I receive baptism of the Holy Spirit. You may, you may speak in tongues. You may not feel a thing happen to you. But that's where faith comes in and you believe in Christ. Whenever I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, there was three little ladies that prayed for me. Three gender. It was beautiful. I did not speak in tongues. But a week later, I had always been praying in tongues before I got baptized. And it all would always come to the tip of my mouth, but it would never come out. And when those ladies laid hands on me and when I prayed, I spoke in tongues. It would just it would just come out, you know, and I don't know anything about that or anything like that, but that's what happened to me. But I did not speak in tongues when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. It like came like a week later, but it came and then I spoke in tongues, you know. So uh, speaking in tongues is a sign. So don't get all nervous, don't get scared. Speaking in tongues is a sign that you are baptized with and in the Holy Spirit. That's all. Don't get afraid. Don't get afraid. But if you believe every word that the Bible says, the Bible speaks of speaking in tongues and an unknown speaking in tongues in a known language and also an unknown language which is between you and the Father. So we we speak in tongues, it's a known language, the day of Pentecost, but there's also a tongue that you speak to the Father in one on one prayer. Because you don't want to scare the people and that's between you and the Father and only He understands. So that is speaking in tongues, but that's baptism with the Holy Spirit. We pray that you receive baptism with the Holy Spirit and believe in it. And not only that, but you, faith by works. You, you put that 
faith to work because faith without works is dead. And amen and amen to that. So thank you for allowing Fishers of Men 316 to come and minister baptism with the Holy Spirit. Receive it by faith. Go talk to your father and just talk to him about it or look up chapters and read. You know, I give you plenty of of scripture. You know, I might even give you a little too much scripture because my sermons are long, but I want I rather fill you with information and and you you get out of that video because you don't want to watch it, but the truth is there, and I'm always going to put the truth there, whether it's long or not. Amen and amen to that. So thank you for allowing Fishers of Men 316 to come administer baptism with the Holy Spirit. I'm sorry this series was so quick. Uh, the videos are putting out. I'm, I'm putting this video out. It'll be out tomorrow. And then we have April the 7th. Today is the 1st. Uh, yes, yesterday was the 1st. So, man, we ain't got much time, man. So we're running out of time. But anyway, thank you for just believing in God and trust Him and seek the Holy Spirit. You now have He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead living in you. But not only that, you have baptized, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now you have work to do as a Christian. So get up and do it. Let's go. Thank you, guys. I love you so much. And may the Lord bless you. And may you continue to walk in the will of the Lord that he has for you. Amen and amen to that. See you next time.